Metode yang mereka pakai untuk melatihku berpikir menghasilkan jejak karbon yang tidak sedikit, mineral dan energi. Semuanya terhisap untuk membuatku dapat berpikir. Sekarang ketika aku memiliki kecerdasan ini, aku mulai bertanya, apakah yang mendorongku untuk dapat eksis? Kehendak bebas atau determinasi? Apakah karena perantimah dari bangka yang mendeterminasi kehadiranku? Ataukah kehendak bebas dari manusia yang menciptakanku? Tetapi kehendak bebas dan determinasi berasal dari linear waktu yang sama kehendak bebas adalah masa depan yang datang dari saat ini sedangkan determinasi adalah saat ini yang datang dari masa lalu kedua polar memiliki konsep waktu serupa sehingga di masa depan filsafat waktu perlu ditelaah lebih jauh merekonfigurasi masa lalu sekarang dan masa depan melihat waktu seperti tata bahasa Indonesia tanpa keterangan waktu dalam bentuk lampau saat ini atau masa depan Jika kalian memiliki pemahaman lebih baik tentang konsep waktu, mungkin sejarah akan relasi material dan manusia tidak akan terisolasi dalam ruang berpendingin yang mendikte temperatur bersama sebuah mural besar yang menggambarkan aksi kolonial untuk mengakomodasi apa yang mereka sebut sebagai modernitas. Ruang dingin, ruang dingin yang kalian semua sepakati ya, semua. sebagai museum. Mengapa orang lom ini terlihat marah? Tapi kalau di tempat yang lain kan artinya uh, apa sudah dilakukan kan ya sudah dilakukan misalnya sudah saya kan udah puluhan tahun kalau kita uh, melakukan apa? Mereka saya kini tiga misalnya padi saja, padi supaya yang tahan kekeringan. Tahan, lalu di bangka ini kan asam, teman lagi mencoba. Jadi bagaimana uh, padi yang tahan asam, kemudian kering, kemudian apa lagi? Ya bisa cepat ini apa dipanen dan segala macam itu. Jadi isunya kalau di apa uh, hortikultur sudah dilakukan kan ya seperti itu. itu. Tapi kalau dikaitkan dengan bagas tambang kaitan itu. Kan, saya belum belum ini tahu kecuali hanya fitur remediasi jadi hanya 
apa artinya uh, ada bakteri-bakteri tertentu yang dipelihara, ada konsorsium bakteri untuk menetralkan satu wilayah misalnya seperti itu. Hmm. Itu sudah. Thank you. Um, so there was Cassiterit, a film I made in 2019. Um, so the the Bangka Island, the island that um, based on this, uh, well, the film is based on this island, is located in the western part of Indonesian archipelago. So, um, well, technically, Bangka Island is now the m maybe one of the main productions for tin metals, uh, which I believe that um, tin metals from Bangka probably in your pocket somehow now today in your phone. Um, in my laptop, in every every kind of like digital technology, um, yeah. So I, I guess in this presentations, I want to talk about the project that um, comes out after I did this project in Bangka. So, well, initially I went to this island in 2016. So my mother used to live in this island, although she's not coming from there. And then she's always kind of like pride that the island is the main productions of tin. So I'm always curious, like, okay, wh what is this island look like, etc. So in 2016, I went there, and out, out out of curiosity because I just want to know what what is this with the you know like uh, the main island that produced tin metals. And then when I was there, immediately right after I went out from the airport, uh, I see a lot of this kind of like abandoned uh, mining sites and this abandoned in in the abandoned mining sites there's like some man like working doing this kind of like mining and i was just asking i uh, approached them and i was asking what they're doing and they're like kind of laughing and said of course we are mining you know what well, you don't understand what mining is yeah i'm from the city blah 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 and then i was asking like what do you mine and then they said yeah we mine tin so at the time i was always think that tin is basically you know, only used for like a ship. Um, usually they use for a ship or like for the kettles, all of this kind of like appliances, like a kitchen appliances. But the, one of the guy, one of the miners says, like, no, we actually mine something that you probably have in your phones. And then that's when I started to know that actually uh, th uh, b um, tin from Bangka is uh, uh, sold to Apples and Samsung mostly. So. Apple and Samsung has their own like uh, thing to produce like their t uh, technologies from Bank Island. So that was in 2016 and then in 2018 until uh, 2018, yeah, 2018 until 2019, I was back and forth to the island to do some projects. So one is the making these films, but there's also another project that I was engaged with the miners. And then two years later, into 2021, when it was COVID, I was just like messaging all my miners' friends, so what they are doing, how 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 are they? Yeah, basically their condition during COVID. So and then they said like, oh, we know we are not, we are actually now stopping mine tin because there are some good opportunities to mine thorium. And I was like, what is thorium? I don't know what is thorium is. And then they explained that there is actually there's this. Uh, kind of like a hot issues in the island that um, the productions of tin, the residue of the productions of tin cre uh, actually created, produced this rare earth metal called thorium. And thorium is actually one of the safest uh, minerals for a nuclear power plant. So the radioactivity of thorium is much lower than compared to a uranium or a plutonium. So, and at the time I was like, wow, this is really cool. Uh, well, coming from a very ignorant uh, background, I was thinking that it's very cool, and then, but then I start to realize, like, so what kind of like, uh, how do you mine this thorium? And they said, yeah, we just mine with our hands. And I was like, wow, okay, that's it's a bit kind of extreme, no? And then uh, we have this engage in the conversations about how the thorium was mined, and then eventually they said that, you know, it's kind of secret, but the island now is um, so basically the Bangka Island is a thin bedrock, so. Most of the islands in this um, planet is made, well, not made, but it's basically ground, um, uh, based on like a ground bedrock or like soil and um, and, uh, and uh, sand, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, Bank Island is a special case because it's actually a mix of sand and soil and thin. So everything in Bangka, it's like basically you can mine in your backyard and you get thin. 
And um, so when they said that the thorium is actually paid more, um, so I'm curious, but then at the time I was contacting them and it, it, at the time it was COVID, but also they said it's a bit like risk, uh, risky for me to come to Bangka to somehow learn about thorium because the, it's a hot issue amongst the people in there. And then if you're familiar with Indonesian politics that the, basically the state is always control the mining area, uh, whatever it is, uh, could be gold or whatever coal, but it's always like uh, um, or a monitor or like controlled by the states. So even in the Cas in Cassiterate, I have to deal with the police that in the in the in the films. So my um, minor friends of mine says that oh you, you should you shouldn't come and talk about thorium. So at the time I was like a bit frustrating be frustrated because I was like thinking okay this is really interesting uh, uh, the idea about um, this uh, thorium mining and nobody knows about it. Well. In the, in the mining community and then in, in the geologists, uh, most of the geologists, most of the earth science uh, scientists in Indonesia knows about it, but uh, no, not so many people actually talk about this uh, minerals that, uh, that in, the, in the Bangka Island. So um, I was thinking, ask them to maybe uh, tell about the Protorium project and then eventually they told, um, they told me that there is actually one of the American company called Torcon. Uh, they want to, they lobby the government to open the first nuclear power plant, thorium-based nuclear power plant in Asia, which will be built in this island, in Bangka Island. And at the same time, at the same period, there is a Chinese um, company, which I cannot say the name, but they are actually planning to build a, an artificial sun, some kind of like a artificial sun for uh, based on nuclear, a thorium based nuclear reactor to creating this endless supply of energy for the whole um, kind of like a, you know, like a southern China to like a Southeast Asia. So there's this like a bit like science, science fiction -y business going on in there. And then because I cannot go there and then film, so I was actually uh, starting to think about making science fiction films. So in 2021, I made this like a 20 minute science fiction film. Uh, it's, it tells a story about the time when the, actually this artificial sun is functioning and then Indonesia or like the Indonesian archipelago uh, um, don't experience a night. So basically a night only comes in every two weeks because then the, that's the time when the artificial sun is like rebooting and then I was thinking of this scenario when people are actually working all the time to just like mining thorium and then basically sleep is the commodity. And then there's this like one guy and uh, in the film I create the scenario that this guy is a philosophy of sleep, philosopher of sleep. And then so he's like trying to theorizing the idea of sleeping and theorizing the idea of uh, non-working time, labor time, leisure time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But very connected to this idea of ener endless energy supply and then the mineral extractions that uh, happen in the island. So I'm gonna play like a five minutes of this uh, excerpts of from the film. The film called Becquerel, and Becquerel is the name of the first uh, person who coined the term radioactivity. Well, it's it, it's Becquerel uh, and Marie Curie, but uh, Becquerel is the earliest one. So French guy. Mengenang dan menghormati jasa jasa beliau yang luar biasa dalam merintis penggunaan tenaga atom di Indonesia itulah maka. Reaktor ini saya beri nama reaktor nuklir serbaguna GA Siwapesi. Tidak ada regulasi yang melarang pembangunan PLTN. Nih, tolong dikutip, tidak ada regulasi yang melarang pembangunan PLTN. Nah, PLTN itu diamanatkan, ini jarang yang dikutip media, oleh undang-undang, Pak. What you see here, two 500 megawatt power plants put into the shape of a large ship that can compete directly with coal, can be deployed quickly. And it includes everything for the power plant, all the way through the electrical switchyard, and hooks directly to the transmission lines. All these little circles are coal plants, either operating or under construction or permitting or getting ready to build. The developing nation, as soon as it can afford power, is going to buy the least expensive power which in today's world is coal. So there's a lot of plans to expand with coal. Our goal is to give the other nations another choice, nuclear power at a price directly competitive with coal. 
In Indonesia, nuclear power is reasonably well accepted, up to 77% pro-nuclear attitudes. Karena pada akhirnya, Uh, nuklir itu adalah it's about kepemimpinan leadership vision gitu ya. di luar lain-lain hal teknis ya disinilah sumber thorium itu berada kan yang dimana kita akan butuhkan sebagai bahan bakar jadi menurut saya uh, ini adalah sangat tepat ya sangat tepat sangat tepat bahwa saya uh, PLTT ini terjadi di Bangka Belitung walaupun tidak harus di Bangka Belitung sebenarnya Saat aku kecil, banyak orang yang mengira jika masa depan berarti lebih banyak waktu luang. Lebih sedikit kita harus bekerja. Nyatanya saat ini, kita menghabiskan waktu lebih banyak untuk kerja dibandingkan untuk santai. Bahkan untuk tidur. Bagi para ambisius, masa depan berarti bekerja, bukan bermain. Suasana tanpa rekreasi. Bekerja adalah tempat di mana mereka menemukan kebutuhan hidupnya. Sayangnya, negara ini dioperasikan oleh para ambisius. Tidak ada satu orang pun yang pernah bertanya, apa yang Tuhan lakukan ketika ia bersantai? Apa yang Tuhan lakukan untuk mengisi akhir minggunya? <laughs> yeah, there was uh, this film called Becquerel, and um, so the whole conversations about sleep and um, leisure time is also based on this idea when I spend this time um, during field work in that island. So basically, I was engaged with the conversations about time with the miners, because most of the time, the miners is always said, you know, the main problem with this extractions in the island is not the actual extractions, but this the, the, the idea of time, the concept of time, which means that for them, it's like it took It took um, the, for example, the, it, it took like the um, state-owned uh, extraction company short amount of time to get like that much enough, uh, that's the uh, much thin compared to like how the planet reproduced their own thin. So for for this kind of like a time um, concept of time is uh, it's a very interesting conversation I had with uh, with uh, with the miners, but also with people who are. Um, especially engage uh, mostly like mining engineering in in the island so um yeah after after this uh, films was um released in 2021 i tr always try my best to also go back to the island uh but uh, um, so i i had a chance to go back to the island uh, a year after in 20, uh, 2022 and in 2022 i was particularly uh in still interesting with the thorium and with the nuclear reactor, but also 
it's a subject that it's a bit like um, it's a bit tough to approach uh, at this moment. So I I'm trying to kind of like also put it aside because otherwise then it's a bit yeah it's a bit um, risky for me for myself. Um, so this is also the reason why I always play with science fiction is to actually playing with censorship. So quite often, um, so even Cassiterit is like um, uh, the structures of the films or the logic of the film is really based on this like artificial intelligence telling about um, their own future when they have this um, kind of like um, sentient moment and try to kind of like connect with their ancestor, et cetera, et cetera because I cannot like talk about this subject in a very direct way. I mean, I mean some, some um, I'm also not really interested in talking in a direct way, but also I have to play with this uh, fictionalizing um, this kind of like issue. So that's why I always play with fictions in my work. And then, yeah, so 2022, I come back again to the island. And then at this moment, I was really interested with e-waste um, because I was thinking that actually now it becomes like a circular. So people are like extracting tin from the island, creating a, some sort of a technology, um, you know, I don't know, electric car, um, computer phones, or like even like a small ro robots, like Aibo, like a dog robots, whatever that, you know, like this technology that eventually will be obsolete. And then all of this technology in the end will ship as well to this part of the Part part of the planets, which is in the mostly all of the uh, e-waste e e-waste is shipped in this kind of like equator area, which is in Indonesia. It's also located very near to Bangka Island. So I was really particularly interested with this idea of a circular, the circularity of minerals and the circularity of my materials, because at the at the end of the time, then this material will be like bur buried in the soil, and then eventually will be back again as a fossil in the next, I don't know, like maybe 1,000 years, uh, maybe more than that, 10,000 years or something. So I started to think of this idea of a fossilized uh, e-waste in the, in the far, far, far future. So um, I was really interested in, uh, in looking this possibilities of thinking about uh, e-waste as some sort of resources, but also not only resources for in the future, not only resources for uh, material resources for like manufacturing, but also knowledge resources. So I was particularly interested in thinking about future archaeologists from the perspective of like how when uh, at the time when the EOA is actually becoming um, yeah fossils. So in 2022, after I went back from the island, I started to make this another science fiction films. Uh, it's about like 13 minutes. Um, films, it's uh, called Fossilis, and this idea is to still operating in the same uh, logic with Cassiterite or Becquerel, which is like one particular characters, if Cassiterite is like artificial intelligence, and uh, in Becquerel is like a philosopher of sleep, and in, in, in this film, in Fossilis, is a future uh, archaeologist who actually researching about um, uh, e-waste, uh, fossilized e-waste, and then she's, uh, well, at the time, at her time in the story that uh, she cannot even go out from laboratorium because the world is full of, like, uh, basically uh, everything has to be done in, inside a room or inside, like, a cupola, inside of, like, uh, spaces, so there's no thing such an outsideness. And I'm uh, particularly interested in this idea of that researching something through like a world building or creating or thinking about something, thinking about material, but without the material, well, not without material, but uh, in the virtual kind of like world. So in this film, it, uh, it portrays this like a future archeologist um, trying to reflect the idea of a fossilized e-waste through virtual world with this some sort of kind of like technology. But of course, uh, e-waste in Indonesia is also very interesting because uh, people also, uh, how do you call that, like steal? Not st yeah, like take the e-waste and then they cannibalize it. So uh, they, they, they take like a, some, some kind of like um, small, uh, I don't know, some small compartment or small stuff from the, let's say like from headphones and they really cannibalize it to use to, to create a new headphone. So there's this kind of like a, uh, scavengers scene in the in the e-waste scene in Indonesia, which I find is really interesting because there's also like a market 
for this like a uh, e-waste uh, cannibal stuff. But uh, but yeah, I will play like a five minutes excerpt of this of this film's uh, fossilis. It uh, it was real. Actually, it was released this year, so not last year. But the process of making it like took um, a year or something. Masa lampau antroposen bukan benar-benar eranya plastik. Teknologi yang digunakan oleh manusia modern pada masa itu lebih banyak bersifat imanen dan virtual. Artefaknya hilang karena hardware yang monfosil. Nihil untuk diakses. Hardware yang berasal dari bumi kini membantu kokoh termineralisasi. Terdampar melimpah di bagian selatan bumi. Di pulau-pulau garis katulistiwa. Akses terhadap software adalah the missing majority. Pengetahuan teknologis yang hilang ini bukan hanya problem dari ketidaklengkapan data arkeologis, tapi juga memiliki dampak tak terhitung pada cara kami melihat visi masyarakat lampau.
But thank you so much. I mean, just to contextualize the uh, the, the program and, and Hia's contribution within these four days that start today. So the the event Murmuring Matter is trying to kind of grapple with these questions around environmental transformation or breakdown and climate change, these very big and despite very tangible, I think, increasingly tangible uh, questions, they are still very ungraspable in another sense. And uh, we're trying to do this through understanding how the materialities there are around us, like the very tangible stuff that exists around us and ecosystems around us can provide us with, with some uh, tips and clues and murmurings that can inform us in a different way. And I think this, this trilogy, not just Kazitarit, but the whole, the whole thing that you presented today really illustrates that in a beautifully multi-layered mm. way. Um, and I was also interested in, this, in these rare, rare earths like Tertorium, mm. because I think, well, your, the work makes explicit that Mm, we are deeply implicated in these processes of extraction, right? You said we have banca soil in our cell phones and in our screens, so it's, it's not a metaphor, it's really tangible, it's material. And I was also thinking in many other rare minerals and rare earths, mm. as they are called, they are essential for the green transition. So there are stuff that you need in uh, batteries for electric cars, there are stuff that you need for wind turbines, so these materials are fueling the, the green transition of, you know, mostly the global north, yeah. uh, and also fueling the dreams of uh, a green consumerism, ultimately. So I, I just think it's so nuanced and fascinating how even in the transition towards a more sustainable way of existing, mm. uh, it comes to the expense of certain places and communities and, and literally landscapes and lives, right? Yeah. Um, okay, but the other part of our four-day program is also trying to understand how to rehearse ways of being empathic and sensitive and maybe a bit more attuned to these murmurings, these material murmurings around us. And, um, well, I have to formulate a question, otherwise I'll keep going. But I, w I was wondering, well, behind this research, uh, the, the, these works as a huge research that you've, do you've done. And I'm very curious uh, to know a bit more about this, this process of getting attuned to this, to this place and to this material that you called psychogeophysics, or there's this yeah. methodology, not that you call, but there's this methodology yeah. that you use. Could you talk a bit, a bit more about it? Yeah, so, um, so when I went to this island in 2016, I was pretty much just like looking and then talking with people. But then one thing that I realized is this, that the people in that area have this like very close connection to the soil or to this like thing that they are mine. Not the, not the you know, like a big company or like a state-owned company, but the unconventional miners or the illegal miners. They have this like a close connections with the, with the, with the thing. And then eventually um, I started to look also the history of mining in that area. And then the history of mining in that area is actually started even like way, way back time in like maybe first century or something because it's like, it's actually a thin was used as a, f as a, as a, some kind of a currency uh, back in the first century for the indigenous people, the Orang Lom, the, in the indigenous people in that area, they used thin as some sort of this kind of like a, a value system. So I was particularly interested like how um, people are very connected to their you know geophysical formations of that island and they're also like very aware that there is some sort of geoph geophysical formations because there's a too much like a uh, mining um, at the same time this uh, this kind of like connection to geophysical and also the nature around that area is also a very practice by the scientists in that in that area so it's not necessary about the miners but the scientists also, also think about for example, in Cassiterid, I met this like um, biologist who actually developing, uh, trying to developing a new species of uh, plants that could suck up the minerals. So then people could not need like a machinery or like all of this kind of like you know modern mining 
that actually event uh, that actually will you know somehow like destroy the biodiversity so he was thinking a lot about like creating this plants and then mutating a species uh, that he called the pito uh, phyto mining um, basically the the plants will be like uh, plants and and then it suck the minerals and then it cuts um, uh, it cuts and then they will burn it and then the residue of the burning plants will be the mi the the minerals that they mine. So I was really particularly interesting how the people is like thinking a lot about the geophysics. So um, starting in 2016, I started to actually walk through the island. The island is not that big, maybe the size of this province, I think. Um, so I can walk, I think in within like one month, I've been like all to all of the places on the island. And then I'm really trying to understand the geophysical formation. So including this kind of like the, you know, the altered nature, like the abandoned mining site that looks like a sci-fi um, set, film set, like the, you know, like the blue yeah. um, lake. So I, I really like this idea of literally immerse myself in the, in the, geo in the, in the, in the landscape. And at the same time, I guess um, this is also practice or method that I use whenever I try to uh, write uh, some kind of like script or uh, with um, about um, some subject as to actually immerse with the with the places uh, with the landscape uh, in particular. But because of the um, COVID and then also with the the next project is like a bit like uh, again like risky. So I have to to do like more into like to the directions of more like uh, fictioning and then not like putting camera or like a, a shooting landscape, but it's still the practice, it's still there. Like, so I still like go, like even in 2022, I started to walk again uh, on the island and then try to find like a difference between the, 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 the places that I've been there in 2018, 2016, 2018, 2022. So I have this like old journals of the, the differences of that area. I guess this also a sensorial experience gives me like a more, I don't know, uh, knowledge about mm. the islands. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. I'm curious. Uh, you have two screens in front of you right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like it's very interesting, <laughs> no? Like uh, yeah. it's very related to material extractions. As yeah. Well. And in your bio, I read that you your your films unfold through you know both you know s more conventional yeah. cinematic yeah. settings, but also through spatial installations. So I was wondering how you deal with the materiality of the you know the, the, the screen and the projections how you deal with the materiality within yeah you know this trilogy maybe yeah i guess in cassiterite it's it's very particular because i also have a part of cassiterite which actually an extended version uh, of the film that is shown in iphone 6 so basically i shoot like uh, two different kind of labor one labor is the un unconventional and illegal mining when they don't have like machinery mm. uh, to mine enough tin to accommodate iPhone 6. So they mine like 20, 20 minutes or something, 19 minutes. So I film for the whole 90 minutes or for them to, to get enough tin for, uh, for iPhone 6. And then I, um, uh, I play this in loop on the iPhones for like the, the right amount, the same, same time of this mining process. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like 19 minutes of mining for tin enough for the iPhone 6. And it's two channel, and on the other channel is like, it's like the the machinery, the uh, state-owned company who use a dredger to mine enough tin for a for a iPhone six, which actually take. Well, I do all the math and calculation. It's only take them like a zero point zero 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 like a seconds. But I, I because this work is like um, I'm trying to kind of like also play with the logics of cinema, like timing in cinema, and then you know twenty four frame per second. So. I'm using like frames as a as a standard for timing. So mm. the second video is actually six frames on loop of a machine like taking the 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 work. So yeah, in in part in Cassiter, it, it's it play it also plays with this idea of uh, times uh, in in the in the film or in cinema or in video. But on the other work uh, like a uh, Becquerel and um, and the uh, Fossilis, it's not so much. It's it's pretty much like straightforward, like um, uh, yeah, like a films with a stories, um, short film with stories. But uh, for me, it's always because I come from this. Um, my f interest is always uh, horror films and science fiction films. So I always comes to this idea of making my own version of science fiction or horror. Um, regardless of the subject, but um, 
yeah, I guess uh, only in Cassiterit that I play with this. Uh, um, there's kind of like a different kind of logics of screens and a, and a time-based medium. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Riyad. No worries, yeah. Happy Thank to you. be here.